Really? Why are you being a jerk? Who told you to even come in here? You're not supposed to be in here right now. Don't chase dogs. He's going to get you one day. That's why this is... You shouldn't let your parrots free range. Come here. Hey, come on. You be nice. You be nice. You got fuzz on your face. What have you been doing? Uh-huh. Yeah, poor Toby. You didn't do anything to deserve that, did you? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Good morning, pumpkin. No acknowledgement? Nothing? You so cute. The sun's finally back out. It has been a very, very, very gloomy few days. I actually haven't really vlogged much at all since the last, um, whatever the last video was. Okay, not everything is about you. Uh, it's just been so gloomy, been so nasty outside, but the sun's out and it is supposed to be down to like, I think 20, maybe 22 in a few nights. So uh, that means it's time to say goodnight to the bananas before I get to that. Look at, look at, I feel real bad. I left a plant out in the cold. I didn't mean to. It just, it got behind some things. I thought it was on the cart to come inside, but oh, poor Sansevieria. Not what they're supposed to look like, but it should be okay because there's still some firm foliage. It's very discolored, which you'd be able to see if the sun wasn't right in the lens. Sorry about that. Some discoloration, but like these, these guys right here, they're squishy. Not good. You know, I've given it a few days but it's still not great. I think it got down to like 27 for like a couple nights. It wasn't just one night. Or there was frost for a couple of nights. So you can see like this is still okay. So the root structure is still all right. I made sure to get it dried out as quickly as I could. I felt so, so, so bad. Okay, so there's all, so there's all my updates. How are you guys doing? The sun, I'm going outside, see? I don't just walk around the house wearing the sunglasses. You can come. Do you want to? You just got all excited. What are you doing? All right, that's what I thought. Yeah, let's go outside. The bananas. That's what I was getting at. I need to go get some mulch. It's time to cut them back. It's gonna be cold enough to like fully finish these off in a few days. 20 degrees, that'll do the trick for sure. So gotta go do that. Get some mulch and get them taken care of and cut all that stuff back. It's just kind of like cleanup time outside and then there's more fun things to do inside. Yeah, see out here, I need to do some stuff with the lighting, like get them set up on their timers. I haven't done that yet. I like to run for about 14 hours a day. This area over here, like everything right here, it's just very dark. That's been a problem the last couple of years, so I'm thinking I might try and go grab a couple more of these LED shop lights. The plants have seemed to do well under those. I've used them for a few years. I mean, at this distance... They're not making a huge impact on the plants. They need to be fairly close to the foliage, but just even a little bit more light over there will make a difference. So I'm gonna try and grab a couple more of those. The problem is these right here, you can like link them together. So this one's plugged into that one and that one is plugged in up there. But the plug-in, like I'll have to flip them around. You get what I'm saying? I'll have to turn them around to hang a couple more over here. Maybe I'll just hook the two that I hang over here together because there's still another plug. That would make more sense. Yeah, they're not made for plants, but their color, they're right around that 6K mark. So they still seem to do the trick. I mean, this isn't, it, this is nothing representative of what they do. This is just from the last few days. But I used them last year and the plants did very well under them. So I figured I may as well keep using them. And then I have two other shop lights that I actually put different LED bulbs in that were made for plants. I still have the boxes. I have some extras over here. Right here. They're just, oh, they're not made for plants. It's just, it says daylight on them. So it was closer <laughs> to the color spectrum we want for plants being 6,500K. That's much better than 5K, which is what most of these types of things are. They have more of a warm hue to them. Well, that one's not even plugged in yet. I have no real objectives for this vlog. So it, it it's not going to be like last week where it was like, oh, look at all the stuff that got done. Nah, not really. Nah, I'm, I'm still in recovery mode from the past few days. I'm just trying to kind of rest and get some stuff together. I have family coming in town in a few days. So there's a lot of stuff I need to do in the house. That's a generalization of just some little things I'm going to go do. Actually, I'm trying to just shut up. Let's go to Lowe's. Hold on. But first, look it. Holy freaking crap. So beautiful. Okay, and while I'm here, I think I need some of that egg crate stuff. Where'd it go? Okay, yeah. IL-18, not IL-3. It's with the 
ceiling tile stuff. This happens every time I try and find stuff. I'm like, oh, I know where it is. And then it turns out I was totally wrong. Uh, wait, what are you doing back? Oh, what, what's going on? Why am I back outside? What happened? Okay, well, guess what? Funny story. Why do I choose to get... Is that a good shot? Probably not. I um, totally had forgotten that the back of my car was full of soil. So, couldn't get very much mulch in here. So, I managed to grab 10 bags, and now I'll go ahead and get another, like, 30. Thinking I'll just go with 20 for now, because I don't want to overload the car. But my support set again, although this cypress mulch, very light, which is nice. I'm trying not to panic, but I just saw the forecast, and what an abrupt change. Like, for one, it was supposed to be 37 degrees last night, got down to like 30 or 29, so not thrilled about that. And I mentioned the 20 degree low that's coming up here, well that's basically now, and <laughs> there's like a... Oh, few days next week where it's going to be in the teens one night's supposed to be 13 that's not supposed to be happening yet normally i bring the plants in move them in like the tropical tropicals and anything that's like a zone eight plant would go in next and then the zone seven plants and so forth right it's just easier that way and that way i have the warmest plants closest to the house and the ones that are most cold tolerant closer to the garage door the exit so in the springtime i can move them out in that same order. The more cold tolerant plants can come out first. So essentially things like the windmill palms, the mule palms, which are down there, those usually go in last. And normally I have several weeks between taking the tropical, tropical type plants in and then the more cold heart. I don't, nope, not this year if that's not happening apparently. Now 20 degrees isn't really gonna hurt my windmill palms. They've had much, 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 much colder temperatures than that to deal with before. I'm not as concerned with them. I'm still probably gonna move them though, just to be safe. But something like Mediterranean fan palm, no, nah, I'm gonna move that in. It could handle 20 degrees also, but why push it? Why take the risk? There's a chance of precipitation, which is really what does these guys in. You don't want moisture getting to that crown when it's cold out. So that has to go in for sure. What else? I'm thinking I should probably move the windmill palms, not the windmill, the mule palms in too, right? And the thing is, they're kind of priceless. I can't replace these. It would just cost an absolute fortune. I got them when they were small for still an expensive price, but they've grown so much. They're like maybe two feet tall when I got them. And I've had them a long time, so I don't, just, I don't think it's worth the risk losing these guys, though I've had these out in the teens on plenty of a kit. Wait, what am I talking about? It's, these should actually probably be okay. And that's also because I'm gonna be heating this thing up. That's gonna keep things pretty toasty. Now, the Pindu Palm, very cold hardy palm. However, this one had crown rot. <laughs> what did I say? Crown rot last year. It's still in recovery mode. Anything that's a little bit more delicate and sensitive, that has to go in. It's just a good idea to get anything inside that's a little bit more delicate or sensitive if they're recovering or anything like that. The bananas, here's the deal with these guys. They can take it, so they went from being top priority of what I got to deal with this week to the bottom. They're fine, I'm not worried about them. I did almost forget that I threw a crinum lily in here, or this is a, uh, this isn't a crinum. I'll put it up here on the screen who this is. It was a start. Someone gave me, it was just a teeny tiny little plant, and I just dropped it into a pile of compost over here to get it growing, but that's not, yeah, that's, it's not looking good. It's gotten too much cold. Last weekend, moved the tropical, tropical plants and things that, like, really would prefer to not have that cold on them. And then, like I said, I normally have a few weeks to go ahead, get things placed and situated properly, and then that then makes more room to bring in the others. Well, I don't don't have that. That's not happening this year. Not to the same extent. It's really, the only thing that I'm worried about are those queen palms. Those great big queen palms outside. These guys. Back here. Now, if you were watching the channel back in like, I want to say probably May, maybe June. I can't remember. Sometime around there, I ordered from the person that I store my palm trees through. I had him pick me up some queen palms when he was down in Florida picking up a bunch of his other plants. And I said, could you grab me a couple little like 15 gallon, just cheapy cheap queen palms? And uh, this is, this is what he brought up to 30 gallon queen palms, which also these are not 30 gallon size. They were way over potted and overpriced. 
I was actually pretty ticked off by that situation. But that's like I'm not. That's not the point here. The thing is, <laughs> they're too big. Now I can get them into the garage. They'll fit, but they're going to have to go on their sides, which is fine. I've had queen palms before. Well, really, it was just two that I used to have where I had them for several years, and they grew. It's what they do. They get big. They grow very quickly. And then when that happens and they grow really quickly, there's normally plastic, like right up to the edge of this styrofoam right there that's on the ground. Then those lay on their sides during the winter time, and this is what I call the cool side of the garage. It's where things go that just kind of need a rest and some dormancy. And the queen palms have always been fine like that. They still get an occasional drink during the winter months, but they just kind of rest and chill. They've always been fine that way. But I can't. That's not going to work right now. And they're not going to fit in my foyer in the entryway either. Ooh. Looks like one of my windows bloomed. Oh, so pretty. I mean, you can't really see it, but it's pretty. Looking the other way, but pretty. Neither here nor there, though. Need to stay focused. Oh. <laughs> There's a bunch of potting soil right behind me. So, the, the, see the problem? I think what I'm going to do is lay them on their sides outside. Okay, I know, I have said it so many times, but you guys, I love this cart. And it actually, one of the things I like about it is you can do this with it down here and then just back off of it. Look at that, that's just so nifty. The queen palms, one nice thing about them, pretty light, so I don't really need that function. I can just cart them around like this, no problem. Here's what I meant by throwing these on their sides. And this is also how I have to have them inside in the winter time. When I do this, I do drill a uh, hole in the pots up here so that I can still water them when they're laying on their sides. It doesn't affect the way anything grows during the summertime because those pots sit inside of different pots. So that part doesn't matter. I think I'll throw a frost cloth over these just to be extra safe. Now, if I had had these for multiple years and they had been through multiple winters and cold and whatnot, I wouldn't be anywhere near as concerned, but they've never had winter before. They're fresh from Florida this year, so they will know how to handle that. Not that, you know, they don't have a thought. You get what I'm saying. They Plants kind of adjust to things over time, but it takes longer than a few months. They'll need a few seasons. This is a nice warm corner. I'll have the pool heater on, so some warm air will collect over here. I'll throw a frost cloth on top of them, and that's going to buy me a few days before that 13 degree low hits. Because I need, you saw, you saw it in there. I need a few days. <laughs> you can't, you know, I'm only one person. I only do so much at a time. And I already went through, didn't do this on camera because I don't show my front yard anymore, but I did go through and mulch my front yard. Companies I've contacted to dump mulch, like they'll throw it on a tarp for you. It's the cost, it's not cheap enough to go that route. To I would rather just spend a little bit more and be able to toss my bags where I'm going to cut them instead of having to load everything into the wheelbarrow and then dump it. I don't know, it's just the way I prefer to do it. Just making that disclaimer now because people usually ask why I don't just have mulch delivered. And that's why this hibiscus got kind of lost in the shuffle, but it's fine. It's cold. I mean, there's some cold damage you can see here, but it'll be all right. And then I have these Japanese aurelias, the Fetia japonica. Awesome plants, really, really cold tolerant. I actually had one of these back here, just one of the regular japonicas. I had one in the ground for like five or six years. Some years during really bad winters, it would die back to the ground, but it would come back and usually get like maybe a foot to a foot and a half tall at the max and give these really cool looking leaves, which is neat and nice, but I'm just keeping them potted now because the winters are just much more harsh and it's not as mild here as it used to be. So they're going inside. They could handle 20 degrees. I'm pretty sure no problem, but I'd rather just take them in now to be safe. They're smaller, smaller plants, easier to kind of work into the nooks and crannies. This one right here, I think the variety's called spider web. Where are you going? You know not to cross that line. Get back here. Uh, 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 you turn around. There we go, good boy. Yeah, this one's called spider web. Sorry about that. We're vlogging. Things are casual. You can see there was some insect damage on it, but luckily it's experienced quite a bit of frost. Sorry, if you're hearing funny noises, it's because I got this this dork up in my face right now. That They've had a few frosts to kill off any bugs on them because they are kind of magnets for things like spider mites. Uh, mealy bugs really enjoy them too. So just get, they're, I mean, they could, they're kind of a pain in the butt as far as a houseplant is concerned in that regard. 
but when I just keep them in the garage, like I mentioned before, with the cold area, the cold side, that's where they go. I just set them in there and I let them chill. They get a splash of water, maybe, I don't know, once a month, and that's about it. Where's your collar? Why are you naked? Where's your collar? If he doesn't have a collar on, that's got to close. Amazes me. 11 years old. Barely getting up and down the stairs these days, but you still managed to get that collar off, huh? It's because he rubs on everything, so he pets himself, he runs around the furniture and scratches himself, and gets all the itchies, and then that collar snaps off. How you do that? And that's also why I train my dogs that they're not allowed to walk out of a doorway until they're told to. So anytime a door opens, particularly to go outside, they know they don't go out that door until they've been given permission. Just helps with teaching impulse control, and then... Don't have to worry about them running away. My childhood dog was an escape artist, would bolt out the door and didn't want that with these guys. You good boy, yeah, you good boy. Okay, that was fun dog time. Deviate a little bit, need to cut this stuff out from under the, excuse you, that's not for you. Need to cut that stuff out from around the mule pump. I don't, also not a priority. Just finished cutting back my Kirkamas. These are the Elisimidifolias, the Siam Tulips. I generally with these just cut everything off of them. Put them someplace cool, dark, and dry for the winter time, and then bring them back out in the spring and start watering them. But you can pull them up, cuddle the foliage off until it's white. Anything that's brown or gooey needs to come off. And then you can store them like it in the Caladium video. You can just put them in a paper bag. That works too. <laughs> I just do this because it's the quickest and easiest thing to do. But there are risks with doing it this way. Pests and things like that, things can fester in the soil, usually dry soil, that's not a huge problem, but it can still happen. And it looks like the squirrels have been out here doing their thing gardening, planting oak trees. It's so nice of them. I don't, I, I don't, I don't need that. And now I'm working on these succulents. You like how I'm using my old car as a working station? Not the best thing to, right, whoa, that was weird. Not the best thing to do here. These I got on clearance from Home Depot. They're awesome, right? They can take a good amount of cold. They've been out here for a long time. It's just Echeverias and Sempervivums. This one over here has a chlorophytum in the center, which is just stupid to put a spider plant in the middle of a planter with all of these succulents. So I want to take that out. They need more water. And even if it was compatible, they grow out like this. So it would take over this entire thing. That was dumb. I mean, Home Depot, I know y'all aren't the ones who put your planters together. You outsource all that, but really shouldn't just be setting people up for failure like that. I'm trying my best to make sure I get all the little pieces of tuber out of here because they will come back with a vengeance. Spider plants are very aggressive growers. And you know, this is a plant that I have had in the ground before, cut them back, mulched them, and they have come back for me in the springtime, like on multiple occasions. So they are surprisingly cold hardy, but they still need to be situated right. Like I had them up against a wall, a brick wall, so it's a warmer spot during the winter time. And there are cold hardy varieties. I mean, this is a two handed thing and I don't, I don't know where my tripod. Okay, and then last minute decision with some herbs and veggies. This is the amazel basil. It has some cold damage. Not something I'm very concerned about though. I'm just gonna come in, give that a cut back and it should be okay. It's kind of a low priority plant. It's not something I'm going to spend a ton of time fussing over, to be honest. This is not the most appropriate pruning for the basil, but it'll have to do for now. Then I have this poblano. <laughs> it doesn't look so good. It, yeah, it got real cold. And I pulled these up at the last minute when I was moving plants in just a couple of days ago, and they need to be pruned. I, I'm so tempted to leave it so I can get some peppers off of it, but I think that it would be in the best interest of the pepper to go ahead and prune it. I'm going to prune it right here, right there. I know, seems extreme, but that's going to encourage it to root out and give me some bushy growth. So there's still some growth points on there. So those should be fine. Going to give these a very heavy watering. I'll let them kind of adjust to the warmer temperature inside for a few minutes first because the soil's a little bit, ch oh wait, no, the soil's warm. I brought the soil in from the garage. Go ahead and get a little bit of water here for these guys. I forgot, yeah, I actually brought the soil in. I have a tub of soil pre-mixed in the garage so that it's already warm and adjusted. They've been in here too. So they're going to get a soak for a little bit 
and uh, I'm going to see if those leaves on the base will rehydrate. Seems unlikely. Once they hit a wilt point like that, like those are, that's some cold damage there. Those are probably done for, but this way I can just get a better look at what's left to prune off of it. Again, not something I'm going to fuss over. There are other things more important to do out here, but these are just kind of like little last minute details, finishing details, things I like to get done out here that I don't normally vlog when I'm just like, okay, let me try and bring in some of these other little things so I can see how they'll do during the winter. Yeah, stuff like that. So I'm gonna give them a while to soak and then what's left out there? Okay, so I, I also have my Mediterranean fan palm tied up here. I do this because I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure I did, at least I went in my head to mention it. This is a palm, I mean, most palms are this way, but this one specifically really doesn't tolerate having water collecting in the crown. They will rot in a heartbeat. So by pulling this foliage up, it does kind of help sort of block water from getting in there a little bit better. Ultimately, I just try to make sure to only water it down below just to be safe. But sometimes things get kind of splashy out here. So I have to be careful. So this is actually, I'm probably going to keep this over with my cactus, my big, big cactus, so that that's not even going to be something I have to worry about. So in this scenario, it's tied up just so that I'm not running into it because you see, see, very, very spiky. It's not super bad, like a Robolinia pygmy date palm. The spines are much bigger, much worse, but I got to say, these annoy me more. I don't know why, because the ones with the Robolini are much more dangerous. They're much more dangerous. They will take your eye out. But these guys, I don't know. They're just so irritating. I think it's partially because those tiny little thorns, they actually will break off and get stuck in your skin. So they're splintery, which is super annoying. It's one of my plants that I will actually probably be moving inside. I'll put it in a more decorative pot or just drop that pot into a more decorative pot and probably have this in my garden window. But I don't usually do those things till after the holidays because I do like a big thing with gingerbread houses, fake gingerbread houses in that window. So that has to wait. And this is also a palm where I want to make sure this goes into really full intense sun next year because I don't like that long extended growth. I think these look a lot better when the growth is shorter, closer to the trunk. It just looks a lot nicer. I don't like that. That's too extended. Oh, there's the dog treats. I forgot where I put those. Whoops. Went out, got all that mulch, went to Sam's and just completely forgot that I had set those treats there. I went to Sam's to get more lights, which is going to be hard to handle since there's less room to move around in the garage, but I can manage it. And I also, uh, on the note with the Mediterranean fan palm, I tie these up the same way just because they're so incredibly wide. Makes it a lot easier to store them. Hey bud, how you doing? Yeah, I see you. You're a good boy. What a good boy. Oh, the lantana tree. Yeah, it looks a little different, doesn't it? I just, I cut it all off. These I store, like with the other plants I was talking about, where I store them cool. Gets a splash of water, like, I don't know, once a month. I just kind of gauge it on what's going on, the temperatures and everything, and how the plants are looking. The, uh, see, God, the snails are so bad this year. The sedum here, I will pull that uh, just because it's going to make a mess. It's going to fall apart. It's going to want more water than everything else. Yeah, here we go. Get that out of there. It's just, like I said, it's too messy. It's not something that I want to have to deal with. It'll shed all over the place. It's a drought tolerant plant. So in theory, it would be okay with this, but just messy because it's also not going to be a spot that's getting much light. Like, much light at all. Like I said, the lantana is just going to be resting. Okay, now that the plants are taken care of that need to be taken care of right now, which is most of them, there's really not much left other than just getting things organized in the grow space. I, uh, time to take care of these bananas. My machete, and I just cut through them. This is not something that I recommend doing with one hand, but just like for demonstration purposes, I usually come up top, start with the top, slice that through, get that all out of there. Then I come down lower. I usually leave like maybe two feet of trunk. It depends on how much mulching I'm planning on doing. I think I'm going to go a little bit lower than that this year. And also like my machete skills aren't amazing. So yeah, that's probably a foot right there, if even. And you know, cutting down the bananas, it's actually kind of a lot of fun because you get to put the machete. Sometimes I will take a frost cloth that's been soaked in water with like Usually I'll fill up a big, like uh, one of those muck bucket type things and put a few catfuls of no wilt or wilt proof, whatever this stuff's called, an anti-transpirant. Soak the frost cloth in that, 
dry it out and that creates a kind of semi waterproof coating on the frost cloth and then I'll wrap that around these trunks and then mulch over it. Just helps cut back on the rotting in the trunks which really isn't a big deal. They'll push through that for the most part but it's just it, I've noticed when I do that it preserves the most trunk now, and also that's bad. That was just a slip of the wrist. That they need to be straight across. It'll be fine though. I'm not worried about it. And then I just mulch them. Simple. Yeah, there's the gist of it. I still have another eight bags to put on here, so that's going to come out further this way, and that's going to come out further that way, but you get the point. It's not that exciting either. It's just, you put mulch on them. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the temperature of this water. Thought it would be a lot colder than this. You have to keep these really clean if the heater's going to be running. All that little stuff's from the mimosa. Yeah, the water's surprisingly not too bad. I'll clean that more later. You guys don't need to watch me clean out a skimmer. But, uh, the... the so messy. Love that tree, but whoa, whoa, she's messy. Look at that's pretty. Interesting outlook over there with the maple at my hand shaking. Sorry. Okay, that was a lot. I mean, not really. It was all stuff that needed to be done, anyways. There's a spider hanging out over here. You stay there. I'm gonna leave you alone. You just give me some space, though. All good stuff. Things needed to be done regardless. Just, I was planning on doing things in a different order, but that's all right. Got it done. No big deal. Happy to have it done. That's the main thing. All that's left is, well, rearranging and organizing everything, which is what I planned on doing in this vlog, but I don't have time for that now. Uh, but I need to do all the things with the shelves and rearrange and make more room, basically, so I can bring in those other seven palm trees, the two mule palms, the three windmill palms, and the two queen palms. And then I have the Adenidia palms over here that are going to get moved into the house. They can't stay out here. But that's going to have to wait for next week. I am spent and just, it's been a very busy week, so I am sorry that there wasn't a video during the week. I had it filmed, mostly edited. It was like rough cut and ready to go out. But I just didn't have time to uh, finish up that video. Just didn't have time to do that and then do this. This had to take priority, everything that was in this video. It's just a video talking about lights. That'll be out next week. And uh, so, yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, the other day, I, I woke up to some bad news. A friend of mine passed away. We hadn't seen each other in a long time. We used to work together, but it was just, I was kind of glum for a few days. Normal, you know, got to allow yourself to grieve and whatnot. I don't like to film if I'm not in a good mood. If there's like stuff going on, then I usually just like, well, that's, that's when I need my me time and just need to chill. So it was because of that, that I was just fell behind with the YouTube stuff. This Stramanthi right here, it really is responding well to being inside. I actually think it's doing better in here than it was outdoors during the summertime. This is one that I picked up really cheap. Looked pretty bad, had all those bad tips on it and everything. And I was going to do a video on it, and I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. Something I wanted to spend some time with indoors and just, you know, give it a chance to breathe, put out some new growth, get some shots of what it looked like then, and one of those things. But look at the growth is, new growth is unfurling. It's opening and closing at night just like it should be. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Looking pretty good. A lot of plants come in and they throw a bit of a fit. And it, this one is like, hey, this is nice. I want to be an indoor plant, which is something you know, <laughs> that's Stramanthes don't like to be indoors. This isn't typical indoor conditions though, right? It's like, okay, it's only 62 in here right now. I just looked at my thermometer. That's because that garage door is open for like, I don't know, 45 minutes while I was doing all that other stuff. And it cooled off a lot because it's 34 outside right now, I think. But it'll warm back up to the mid-70s, low 80s here, not too long with the heaters going. And it's it's been enjoying that. There is one thing that I feel really bad about, like really bad about. This is poor Garami. And no, it doesn't live in this bowl. I brought all the fish in several days ago and uh, I did a couple of checks back in late September or October for the tropicals and I was like okay the bullfrog got them because I wasn't finding them but apparently I missed a paradise that's not a better shot I missed one tropical fish this is a paradise gourami they can take really cool temperatures not this cool that water outside is 41 degrees so uh, this guy's been acclimating to the warmer temperatures. I'm not going to acclimate it like I typically would with the fish, where I would 
let it float in the water or drip the water in, that would be way too drastic of a change. I've just been letting it acclimate to the air temperature. This is, it's gonna take a pretty long time to get this thing adjusted. I see you, spider. I see you. Keep your distance. I'll move the spider into the plants in just a minute. Yeah, so I feel really bad about that. Poor Gourami. It's okay, though. It's looking much better just in the past couple of hours. And it, so, no, full disclosure, this is I'm not a fish bowl. It's a floral bowl. Use it for terrariums and those sorts of things. I don't recommend keeping fish in bowls. Even betas, like, it's just... Just because they have a lung doesn't mean that that's the condition they should be kept in. I still, they really, a tank is just, it's so much nicer. I wouldn't want to spend my life in a bowl that's mean. But this is just, it's what I had nearby to scoop the fish up and let it acclimate to the air temperatures. And actually, I probably should have put it in something else because this is very thin, so even that might be a bit drastic. Should be okay, though. They're really tough fish once you've had them for a while. They're really hardy and... Poor, poor baby. They have a lung, just like they're a labyrinth, like a beta fish. So that's, I'm not concerned about the oxygen. It can take a breath. This is extremely temporary. Like just, you know, for a few hours, which is a long time to be in here. But that's, I can't, like I said, I can't just throw it in the water. The poor thing, that would just shock it. So it's going to rest there. I feel very bad about it. That was a major screw up on my behalf. I really, like I said, try and spend a lot of time making sure the tropical fish are out of there, but it just, it, I missed one. It happens. And it makes sense though, that the bullfrogs got all of the mollies and those things because they hang out at the surface. And then the other tropical fish that were in there were pretty big and kind of mid-level swimmers. So the frog would get those. The paradise gouramis though, they have always hung out right around this pole right here, kind of up inside those shelves kind of like how when you see shots in the ocean around like pilings and things like that they seem to prefer that area and I, so i think that that's why the frog didn't get it and it's not going to be alone because there are others that the, those were like the only thing the frogs didn't get were the shabunkan goldfish some fantails some paradise gouramis and those things i think the goldfish were just a little bit too big for the frog and then like i said the gouramis i think they're hiding out over there which is good so that you Y'all are smart. You're smart little fish. Neat fish, too. I love paradise gouramis. Normally much more colorful than this, but it's, she's mad. I can't really blame her for that either. I would be pretty ticked off, too. And I would just keep the vlog going and just keep it like an extra long one, but I'm still dealing with those computer issues. And actually, I have a family member. I got to pick up from the airport here not too long, so I got to get this video edited before I got the family in town because then I can't edit the video. And then the vid That'll never happen. You never get to see the video. It won't, wouldn't be out till next weekend. It's time to shut up. <laughs> There's been enough going on here. I'm so excited about that new leaf. It's more exciting. The new leaves, when the plants are inside, have y'all noticed? I'm sure you, I'm not the only one who thinks this way. When they're inside, the new leaves are much more exciting. Outdoors, I mean, it just grows and grows and grows almost effortlessly. But when they're inside, I'm like, yeah, look at you. You're nice and happy. And what a pretty shot right here right with the big leaves and that colorful foliage from mr freckles over there and then you got the burrow's tail and that cordelin fruticasa in the background so pretty oh and then the tree fern i know i haven't addressed the tree fern and i'm still not going to we'll talk about that another time thanks for hanging out just another week of getting some stuff done out here and i hope everybody's doing well hey don't forget to do the whole thumbs up thing like the video that's really the most helpful thing you can do for a youtube channel is to like the videos and comment down below uh subscribe as well hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out i typically upload multiple times a week just just not this week oops sorry about that my social media is linked down below i'm on instagram way more than anything else I think this thing needs a polishing. It's kind of dusty. But it, anyways, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, keep on growing. Bye-bye.